session natin ngayong gabi is recorded siya. Or at least yung mga gustong uh, manood na hindi nakadalo ngayong gabi, pwede silang mag-review gamit yung ano natin, yung recorded session natin. So, bali sa ano natin, session natin na, ngayon guys, uh, bali continuation lang siya ng first session natin last time. So, bali last time, mag-start tayo dun sa pag-install ng GDK ng Java para magamit natin siya uh, pag-program, pag-create ng mga uh, simple programs natin. And after nun, yung mga basic syntax for variable, um, yung mga data types, kung paano tayo mag, mag-declare and initialize variables. Uh, paano natin siya, I think, andito pa siya sa ating, ano, uh, dito tayo sa, ayan. So, na-discuss din natin yung mga single line comment. Ayan, tsaka yung multi-line, kung ano yung purpose niya. Tsaka, ano pa ba? Um, yung mga operators, yung mga, yung arithmetic operators, yung addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. Meron din tayong modulus, uh, yung increment, yung post increment, tsaka yung pre-increment. Tsaka itong comparison operators, like for example, itong dalawang equal sign, yung not equal to, um, ayan, greater than sign, less than or equal, um, yeah, less than, and then greater than or equal to, and lastly, yung less than or equal to. And of course, last time, meron din tayong na-discuss yung um, sa strings, yung mga methods ng, ng string. So, yung length to uppercase to lowercase. Tsaka na-discuss din natin yung if-else statement, kung ano yung purpose nun. Um, yung while loop, um, yung for loop, yung, yung different types of loops. Yun nga, yung for loop, while loop, tsaka yung do while loop. Okay, so in this particular session, guys, yung pag-uusapan naman natin is yung about uh, Java break statement at saka yung sa continuous statement. Yes po. Ah, I see. Sorry, sorry. Ah, sige. Share ko lang. Um, hindi pala nakikita yung ano. Okay. Ayun. So, yun nga, uh, balikan, balikan ko lang kasi hindi pala nakita yung ano, screen natin. So, ito, yung sa single line comment, tsaka yung, tsaka yung multi-line comment, tsaka yung comparison operators, arithmetic operators, yun nga, yung addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, tsaka yung sa uh, modulo, tsaka yung increment, tsaka, um, yeah, increment, tsaka decrement. Um, for loop, ayun, na-discuss natin yun, while loop. Tsaka yung switch case last time na kapag meron kang gustong i-evaluate na value, for example, meron tayo ditong variable. Uh, variable. Struck uh, curly braces. And then meron tayong case 1, for example. Tsaka yung break. Case uh, wrap. Case 2. Ayan. Case 3. Default. Okay. So, ito yung na-discuss natin last time. And, um, bali yung discussion natin is na-touch na natin yung break, right? So, yun nga, yung sa ano natin ngayon, yung session natin is all about Java break statement and um, Java continuous statement. So, kung ano yung purpose, bakit kailangan natin ng break, bakit kailangan natin ng continue na um statement when it comes to programming sa Java. So, merong mga cases na halimbawa itong sa Java break or break statement in Java. Merong mga cases na gusto natin pahintuin yung loop um yung mga if else statement natin, gusto natin kung meron tayong variables na ini-evaluate tapos meron siyang uh, result na true, pwede natin siyang i-break yung Uh, execution for example ng loop or something now 
uh, from from the previous tutorial or from the previous session, you have already seen the break statement. So, yung ginamit natin siya is dito sa um, switch statement. Right? Uh, ko mapasok. Now, ang purpose dito ng break is to jump out of the um, switch statement. Kumbaga, after nitong case 1, kapag af uh, tapos na ma-execute yung mga statements dito, kapag tapos na ma-execute ng statement dito, then uh, mag-execute na itong break na statement. And of course, after nyan, lalabas na siya dito sa switch. So, after nyan, dito na naman siya sa other statements below. Other statements below ng switch. Okay, so that's the purpose of break dito sa switch case. Okay. Okay. So, ngayon, yung sa break naman, uh, it could be uh, also be used to jump out of a loop or parang i-cancel natin yung loop para hindi na siya mag-iterate. Di ba nga, yung, yung loop is to like for example, mag-create tayo ng loop int i equals to 0, i less than or equal to 10, then i plus plus, and then open and close curly braces, and then in here, we will try to output something sa screen natin. So, for example, yung i. Okay? So, kung uh, i-ano natin siya, pa-execute, kailangan natin siya i-compile. So, Java, uh, Java C, and then yung pangalan ng ating class, which is test that, uh, yeah, pangalan ng file, test that Java, and then of course, we need to type in Java test. And I hope, klaro yung output ng terminal. Klaro ba? Guys? Kasi kung hindi, uh, switch tayo dun sa terminal mismo. This is integrated kasi sa uh, VS Code. Anyone? Pa feedback? Klaro ba? Itong output ng terminal natin. Hindi pa ba? Okay. So, um, ganito na lang para ano, mas malaki siya. Try natin open sa CMD. Ayan, mas malaki yata yung ano dis dito display. So, CD documents. Ayan. PIR. Uh, to list the directory inside. Uh, I think it's Java programs. So, change directory and then Java programs. List directory. PIR. Uh, so, online class. Online class. There you go. So, dito natin makikita lahat ng, ng files natin. Itong main.java, yung ginamit natin last time. At saka itong test.java, which is ito yung uh, ini-edit natin ngayon. Okay, so, um, merong nag-feedback na hindi pa daw natin nakuha yung uh, loops. Uh, yeah, loops from the previous tutorial. So, yung purpose kasi ng loop, balikan lang natin konti. Loops. So, yung loops kasi, uh, yung purpose na is to execute block of code several times until um, uh, as long as yung specified condition niya is rich or equals to true. So, for example, this one, yung for loop, yung, yung format ng paggawa ng for loop is this. Um, keyword na for, uh, for, tsaka open and close parenthesis. Okay? Dito sa open and close parenthesis, dito, dito natin makikita yung variable initialization. 
condition tsaka increment ito yung tatlong makikita natin within the open and close parenthesis so ito yung variable declaration and initialization so bali dito nag declare tayo ng variable i tsaka uh, nag initialize tayo ng value into 0 and ito naman yung condition bali ito yung uh, parang deciding factor ng for loop kapag true ang evaluation nito mag-execute mag mag siya ng statement within the curly braces. Ayan. At saka yung last naman is yung increment. Uh, yung purpose niya is para mabago yung value ng i natin. Okay. So, halimbawa, to illustrate, so for loop, ito ang value ng i. Um, condition saka yung increment which is i++ okay ah uh, meron pumasok okay now sa first iteration ng ating for loop bali yung unang iteration yung value ng i natin is 0 right so, yung condition is, um, kung yung 0 ba is less than 10. So, yung result niya, lagay natin dito yung result. Result niya, um, true. Okay? So, yung initial value ng i is 0. So, bali dito siya papasok sa ating condition, 0 less than 10. Okay? So, i-check niya kung yung i natin, which is uh, set to 0, kung less than ba siya sa 10. So, yung after evaluation niyan, yung result is true. Now, yung output will be the value of um, i natin, which is 0. Okay? So, bali, papasok siya muna dito sa ating statements. Ayan. Tsaka, mag-output siya ng 0. That's because yung system that out that print line natin um, ay parang nagpapa-display tayo dito ng value ng i which is yung set to 0. Now after niyan after execution lahat ng statement dito halimbawa meron kang statement marami dito inside the curly braces pero after niyan babalik siya dito sa increment i++ so valid diyan magkakaroon na ng operation na i um equals i plus 1. Bale, yung initial value ng i natin, uh, parang dadagdagan lang niya ng isang value or 1. So, second iteration ng loop natin, magiging 1 na yung value ng i natin because nag-increment na siya. Tapos, babalik siya dito sa condition na uh, 1 is less than to 10 because yung i natin ngayon is 1 na siya. So, magiging 1, uh, parang i-check niya is 1 less than 10. So, yung result niyan, magiging true because obviously, 1 is less than 10. Ayan. So, yung output is true, or I mean yung result is true. So, yung output niya is 1. Okay? So, another increment. Um, I plus 1, again. So, bali dito, 1 uh, yung i natin equals 1 plus 1. So, magiging 2 yung another iteration. Magiging 2 yung i natin dito for another iteration. So, 2 and then less than or uh, less than 10. So, check nya dito if yung 2 na value is less than ba siya sa 10. Now, sa result, of course, yung makukuha natin dyan is true because again, obviously, yung number 2 is less than number 10. So, yung output niya is 2 and then you get the point hanggang 9 because yung 9 is less than 10. Pero pag, pagdating niya ng 10, mag-exit yung for loop natin because yung 10 is not less than 10. So, yan yung purpose or yung concept behind ng loop. So, sa for loop yan. Now, kung dito tayo sa while loop, 
yung uh, format niya is ganito. While, tsaka open and close parentheses. And then, dito sa loob is condition. And then, open and close curly braces. And of course, dito sa, sa loob ng curly braces, ito yung mga code block to be executed. Kagaya din ng ano natin dito, system.out.println. So, sa condition, example natin yan, halimbawa, meron tayo ditong variable in x equals to 0. So, yung condition will be x less than 5 for example. And halimbawa, dito sa loob ng curly braces will be system.out the print line and then of course the value of our i for example i mean x because we're using x here and of course we need to iterate this para magiging false at some point sa ating program yung value ng uh, expression na ito because kapag hindi tayo nag ano nag uh, increment hanggang hanggang forever yung yung execution ng while loop because at some point sa program natin, hindi na, hindi siya mag-evaluate to false. So, kailangan natin siya i-increment. So, that will be x++. Plus plus. And then, semicolon. So, try natin siya. Save. And, balik tayo dito sa ating command prompt. So, compile our test.java file. And, resize this para mas makita. Java test. So, yung output niya is ganito. Ayan. Meron tayong output coming from the first for loop. And yung pangalawang output natin dito is galing dun sa while loop natin. So, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So, nag-start siya 0. Ayan. So, bale, um, ginawa dito sa while loop is... Um, Chine-check nga dito initially yung value ng x natin. So, x, which is 0. So, magiging 0 less than 5. So, kung true, execute lahat ng statement dito. So, ayan yung value niya. Um, x. So, magiging 0 yung unang output natin. Now, um, increment. x++. plus plus so, bali yung x natin ngayon magiging 2, or I mean 1, because 0 yung una. So, 1 less than 5, so true yan. Execute naman itong uh, statement na to, which is yung output is 1. Okay? And gawin natin siyang side by side. Yung ano natin. Yung VS Code, tsaka yung command prompt. Ayan. Now, um, second, uh, third iteration, yung x natin is magiging 2. So, 2 less than 5. Uh, execute naman na naman yung statement. And so on. So, you get the point. Hanggang yung x natin magiging 5. Okay? So, magiging 5 siya. Uh, dito na siya mag, mag um, parang i-evaluate yung expression. 5 less than 5. So, magiging false yan and mag exit itong while loop natin. So, that's the concept of while loop. And yung isa naman, yung um, do while, uh, binaliktad lang yun na while loop. So, do, tsaka open, close, curly braces, and then while, and then expression dito, yung condition, tsaka um, yan, dito naman sa loob yung mga code block to be executed. Okay, so ganun lang yung concept ng uh, do while, tsaka while, tsaka for loop. And meron tayong uh, sa mga bago na version ng Java, meron tayong tinatawag na for each. For each. So, um, one type of loop also na mas mas maikse. So, titingnan natin yan mamaya. Okay. So, palik tayo dito. And, yun nga. Oh my goodness. Um, yeah. So, yun. 
uh, yung discussion natin is about break statement and continuous statement. So, yun, nakita natin siya dito sa switch case para mag-jump out tayo dito sa switch kapag tapos na tayo sa case na, uh, for example, case 1. Okay, and then, ayan, break na siya dito. So, yung purpose niya dito is para lalabas tayo dito sa switch. Right? Now, kung sasabihin natin na gagamitin natin yung break within the loop, so, yung purpose niyan is to break, um, like, to jump out of the loop. Parang i-cancel natin yung loop. So, for example, dito, uh, delete natin to. For example, meron tayong loop hanggang 10, right? So, yung output nito is hanggang 10. Let's try that para mas makita nyo. No. Java test. Ayan. Uh, hanggang 9 lang pala kasi uh, less than 10 tayo dito. So, nag-start siya from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, hanggang 9. And kapag uh, try natin gamitin yung jump, or I mean yung break statement dito, um, lalabas tayo or mag-cancel tayo or kakancel niya yung for loop natin. So, halimbawa, um, if, meron tayong condition sa loob, if i equals equals 5, then break. So, yung purpose natin dito is, kung halimbawa daw, yung value ng i natin is equal to 5, then break the loop. Or meaning, exit tayo dito sa loop mismo. Okay? So, try natin yan kung ano yung output. Yung kanina is 0 hanggang 9 yung output niya. Ayan. Now, try natin siya ngayon. Compile muna tayo. Ayan. Tsaka natin yung program. Java test. So, hanggang 4 na lang yung ano natin. Yung ano tawag dito? Yung output. 0, 1, 2, 3 hanggang 4. Okay? So, kasi yung 5, uh, hindi na tayo nakapag-execute ng 5 because kapag yung i daw is equal to 5, then exit the for loop. Kung baga, na-cancel natin itong entire for loop. Hindi na hindi na siya dumaan sa sa 5, sa 6, sa 7 hanggang 9. That's because naglagay tayo dito ng break and yung purpose ng break dito is to jump out of the loop. Meaning cancel the loop itself. Okay? So yun yung purpose ng break. Again, yung break could be used doon sa switch case statement. Ayan. So, yung purpose ng break dito is to jump out of this particular switch statements. Ayan. Pero dito sa for loop, ginamit natin yung break para mag e maka-exit tayo dito sa for loop. So, hindi na siya dadaan sa 6, sa 5, sa 7, hanggang 9. Kasi, nag-cancel na tayo dito if yung i is less, or I mean, i is equal to 5. There you go. Now, meron tayong continue na statement. So, yung continue statement naman breaks one iteration in the loop. So, kung, uh, kung kundi, yung condition natin is masatisfy, so, uh, meron siyang gagawin na parang uh, i-break na i-break niya yung one iteration. Tsaka mag-continue siya sa next iteration ng loop. Kumbaga, yung break statement natin is to, is to exit totally from the for loop. Pero yung continue naman is to break the iteration only. Okay? For example, lagyan natin dito ng uh, 4. Uh, comment natin yan. And dito sa loob ng if, uh, if condition natin, lagyan natin dito ng continue. So, save this. Close natin yan. Save. And then, um, 
compile our file and then try natin siya for run so yung output niya is 0 hanggang 9 pero notice na wala tayong value na 4 okay so 1 uh, 0 1 2 3 and then nag skip siya ng 4 so 5 6 7 8 and 9 so kulang ng isang value natin dito kasi nag uh, ginamit natin yung statement na continue. Bale, yung ginawa niya is um, kinancel niya yung iteration number 4. So, pag cancel ng um, iteration na yan, hindi na na-execute ang statement na ito. And bumalik na siya dito sa ano natin, uh, open and close parenthesis. Initialize the value, um, uh, yeah, increment the value, uh, the, I, the value of i, and then set the value of the i, and then condition, and um, check check na rin ng, ng value ng i. So, yung value ng i ngayon is nagiging 5 na siya. So, print na, print na yung value niya. So, that's why wala tayo ditong value na 4. Because, uh, parang yung kinancel niya yung 1 iteration, yung iteration number 4 or something. Okay? Questions so far? Questions? Claro ba? Okay, so, walang questions. Now, proceed tayo dun sa um, arrays. Ito yung pinaka-importante na ano. Yes, uh, Emmanuel. Meron ata siyang question. Emmanuel. Sino yun? Sartorio Jr. Paano po nawala yung 4? Nawala yung 4. That's because kapag yung i is equal to 4, um, kinancel natin ang iteration na yan. And wala na or hindi na uh, execute yung na-execute ang statement na ito. Ano sabi niya? Oh, yung yung purpose nga ng, ng condition natin dito is kapag yung value ng i equals to 4, um, cancel that particular iteration. So, hindi na ma-execute. So, kahit marami ka ditong statements, um, statements, another statement, another one, okay, um, statements, another statement, another one. So, hindi na ma-execute lahat ng statement na ito kapag yung i equals to 4 na yung yung condition natin dito is equal um nag evaluate siya into true and meron tayong continue dito so bale yung iteration number 4 ma mawawala siya hindi na ma-execute yung mga statements natin babalik siya dito sa taas okay so that's why wala na yung ano natin value number 4 ayan so meron pa tayong question Kailan po dapat gamitin yung for, while, at do while? Um, yung for loop kasi, gagamitin natin siya para don sa mga uh, alam natin kung kailan siya matatapos. Ito yung loop na gagamitin natin na alam natin kung hanggang kailan lang matatapos yung execution ng code. Pero kapag hindi mo alam kung hanggang kailan yung uh, uh, like how many times the code should execute then gamit ka ng while loop. Okay? While loop. So again, if you know exactly how many times you want to loop then use for loop 
Pero kung hindi mo alam kung how many times na gusto mo mag-loop, then use yung while loop or do while. Yun yung purpose niya. Okay? So again, kapag alam mo kung hanggang kailan lang matatapos yung looping, then use for loop. Ayan. Okay, so I think yun lang yung uh, about dun sa break and continue. And I hope na klaro siya sa inyo kung ano yung purpose ng break at saka continue. Okay. Now, proceed tayo dun sa um, arrays. So, delete natin to. So, again, we will be discussing next is array. Arrays in Java. Okay. Okay. So, bali, yung, yun nga, yung sunod na gagamitin natin or i-discuss natin is about Java arrays. So, yung array, uh, ginagamit natin siya to store multiple values in a single variable. Yung um, analogy na or yung parang uh, application niya is ganito. Halimbawa, meron kang grades ng isang sudyante. So, meron kang grade para sa for um, PE, grade for um, like, ano ba, biology, something, grade for programming, um, history, uh, ano ba, yeah, history. So, yung magiging itsura ng program mo niyan is magkakaroon ka ng int, for example, grade PE, yeah, equals, so for example, 90, equal to 90, int grade um, bio equals 95, for example, halimbawa lang, ito yung mga grades mo kapag medyo matalino ka, so grade programming, that will be 92, int history grade, Like, for example, marunong ka sa history. So, 96. So, yung ginawa mo dito is meron kang apat na ah, lagyan pa natin ng isa. Int grade halimbawa um, psychology. Ayan. Lagyan natin dito ng 93. Ayan. So, dito meron kang limang variables na nag-hold siya ng um, grades mo or a, or a particular student. So, meron kang grade for your PE, biology, programming, history, at saka yung sa psychology. Now, uh, okay naman siya yung declaration mo dito, yung initialization mo ng value. Kaya nga lang, uh, maraming variables yung ginamit mo. Meron kang lima. Okay? Para mag-save lang ng grade ng isang estudyante or a particular student. Pero, kung gagamit ka ng array sa Java, so, pwede mong i-save yung multiple values in a single variable. Meaning, uh, pwede mo gamitin itong variable na ito para ma-save ang lahat ng grades. Yung 90, 95, 92, 96, 93. So, what you can do is, At para mag-declare yung variable, variable array sa Java, all you have to do is specify mo yung type. So, for example, int. So, meron tayong halimbawa string. Pwede rin string or pwede rin int. Int, tsaka specify mo yung square brackets. Open and close square brackets. And then, halimbawa, lagyan mo dito ng grades. Okay? This is how you can declare an array in Java. And, of course, it doesn't matter, guys, if pwede mo siya ilagay dito sa unahan or pwede din siya dito sa um, after, after ng variable name. Okay? So, you can do that. And, of course, halimbawa meron ka ng array, of course, you can assign values to this. So, pwede mo sabihin dito, halimbawa, 
equals and then open and close curly braces and inside the curly braces you can specify the values so for example 90 um, 95 92 96 and of course the, the last one will be 93 so as you can see here um, instead of having like five variables uh, gagamit lang tayo ng isang variable pero yung variable na to meron siyang five values okay so yun yung purpose ng arrays um, meron tayong na save na memory kasi hindi na tayo mag-assign ng other memory para sa other values isa lang yung gagamitin natin kasi um, when it comes to programming kapag nag-declare tayo ng variable meron yung ina-assign na memory sa ating physical memory yung sa RAM natin so yung gagawin yung gagawin ng program is mag-aalat siya ng certain amount of memory para dito para dito para dito para dito para dito pero yung ginawa natin sa array is isang variable lang so isang memory location lang yan pero meron siyang multiple values now kapag gusto mo ma-access yung yung element ng array all you have to do is kopyahin mo yung pangalan ng array so for example grades and then kung halimbawa gusto mo kunin itong number 1 itong 90 ito yung pinakauna na uh, value yung 90 pero take note yung elements ng array natin is naka-index siya index base meaning uh, meron tayong uh, gagamitin na number para ma-access itong uh, elements na to within our array so yung index natin is zero based meaning uh, yung first element natin yung index niya is zero yung second is one yung third is two yung yung fourth is th uh, three yung panglima is four so balik kung gusto natin i-access itong first element so all we have to do is specify natin yung index niya which is zero so makukuha natin yung value na 90 so let's try this system that out that print line there you go and then semicolon at the end of this particular line to signify that this is the end of this statement so save and of course we need to compile and run our program ayan meron tayong nakuha dito na value na 90 that's because yan yung value ng grades and then 0. So, that's 90. So, kung yung pangalawang variable naman or yung value natin or um, element yung gusto natin kunin, of course, you have to specify that as index 1. So, again, this is index 0, index 1, index um, 2, index 3, and index 4. Okay? So, ayan. Try natin to. Save. And then, um, compile. And of course, um, run a program. So, that's basically what we're getting. Uh, the value of 95. Okay? And of course, yung array naman, pwede natin siya gawin sa other types. So, halimbawa, meron kang string of um, collection of, of cars, for example. Or maybe subjects. Okay? And then, specify mo dito yung history. And, merong dumating. Ayan. And, of course, programming. Um, biology. Lagyan natin dito yung PE. So, basically, meron tayong apat na collection of subjects. Namely, history, programming, biology, tsaka yung PE. So, uh, adyan yan sa loob ng ating subject na, or subjects na array. Ayan. Bale, kung halimbawa gusto mong palitan ang uh, any element dito. So, halimbawa gusto mong palitan yung history. So, all you have to do is specify mo lang yung subjects mo na array tsaka specify mo yung index ng, gusto, ng element na gusto mong palitan. So, halimbawa, yung history is index 0, right? 
So, palitan mo siya halimbawa si Bika at Kultura. Yan yung bagong value ng subject mo. Okay? So, yung magiging output niyan, try natin. Si Bika at Kultura subject, uh, that will be subject 0. Ayan. So, save natin yan. And let's compile our program. And of course, run our program. And now, we're getting Sibika at Kultura as the output for this particular statement, subject 0. Which is originally, history yung value dapat niya. Okay? So, that's how you can access any element sa, sa ating array. And this is how you can also check or I mean change the value of any element within the array. So you can change whatever element na andito. So pwede yung, yung index 1, index 2, index 3. And pwede natin siya ipa-iterate sa loops. So what we can do is use for example uh, for loop para ma-iterate natin or ma-display natin lahat ng subjects na andito sa subjects na array natin. So, what we can do is, for example, int x equals to 0. Uh, specify natin 0 because yun nga, yung array natin is uh, naka 0 base siya. So, pwede natin lagay dito index para mas klaro siya. So, index equals to 0, then index um, less than subjects that length. So, yung purpose ng length natin, tama ba yung spelling? Length. Yan. Subjects that length. Uh, kukunin lang natin kung ilang elements yung andito sa ating subject. Okay? Ilang elements yung nasa loob ng subjects natin. Ito yung purpose ng statement na ito. So, halimbawa, kapag meron kang 5, so 5, um, 4, pwede din 4. Okay? So, index, increment natin siya here. So, inside the curly braces, of course, we can try to display the element itself. And, of course, what we can do here is specify the subjects array. Open and close, and then index. Okay? So, this is the same as saying na um, subjects open and close square brackets and then zero. Pero yun nga, sinas, um, ito yung magiging holder ng value natin ng 0 or 1 or 2 or 3. So, try natin siya. Save. And, um, compile. And then, run our program. Ayun, meron tayong um, output. Sibika at Kultura, Programming, Biology, and PE. Again, this is what we get from this particular for loop. So, Sibika at Kultura, Programming, Biology, and PE. And notice na nawala na yung history natin, which is yung original value. That's because... Uh, Uh, we change the value into Sibika at Kultura. So, walang history na makikita dito. Ginawa natin siyang Sibika at Kultura. Okay? And, yung sinasabi ko kanina na for each na for loop, ito yung pwede natin gawin. So, for example, uh, instead na doing this particular for loop, yung medyo mahaba, what we can do is try to iterate that with a more simpler for loop. So, what we can do is, for example, um, add here string i and then colon and then of course, yung ano natin. Uh, what do you call this? Yung array natin. Okay? So, yung array, for example, um, subjects, right? So, inside here, what we can do is display the 
uh, variable i. Okay? So, let's try this. So, again, instead na gawin natin siyang variable, uh, variable declaration, variable, uh, I mean, condition, at saka increment, ito, ginawa natin siya, nag-declare lang tayo ng string i, at saka yung colon na, na, na symbol, at saka yung specified natin na um, array, and then display natin siya. So, let's check this. Um, output tayo dito ng isang statement para may separation yung dalawang for loop natin. Okay. So, save, and then compile, and then run. So, there you go. Ito yung first for loop natin. Ito yung pangalawang for loop natin. So, bali yung ginawa natin dito, uh, sinasabi natin na kunin mo lahat ng element ng subject array, i-assign mo sa isang string. Ayan. Bali, ito yung variable natin. And, i-display mo siya dito sa statement na ito. Okay? So, that's why we're getting this particular output. And, this is just the same with the first for loop. Pero, notice yung mas maiksi siya kaysa sec. Uh, mas ma maiksi itong pangalawa kaysa dito. Wala na yung declaration, condition, and um, increment. But, uh, what we have here is this particular statement only. So, mas maikse and wala nang marami pang yung, yung sinasabi nga wala nang kuskus balungos. <laughs> okay. Questions? You can ask questions if meron kayong questions. Yes, of course. Uh, yung ginawa daw natin sa string, pwede, na, pwede din sa, um, ano tawag dito? Sa, sa int. So, for example, meron kang ito, grades. So, what you can do is, of course, if int yung type niya, you have to make sure na um, int din yung ilalagay mo dito. So, for example, int y, and then grades. Tsaka display mo lang yung um, yung grades which is y naka-assign na siya into y so let's try that and there you go meron tayong values 90, 95, 92, 90, 96, 93 so yun yung mga um, values natin galing dito sa grades so you can do that for other types also if you want Yes, of course. Um, ito yung bago. Bago sa ano? Bago sa um, Java programming. I, I think hindi naman siya bago because mata, mat, medyo matagal na siya. Pero, of course, this is acceptable naman. Um, in in academe, halimbawa yung sa klasiko, ina-accept po ang ganito. Kasi nga, this is officially supported sa Java. And why would I deny the fact na uh, mas maganda siya gamitin mas yeah mas mas lamang ka kung gagamitin mo to kaysa dito sa uh, this is for old um anyway meron nang meron namang ano meron namang um cases na pwede mong magamit ito okay pero pwede din kung gusto mong ng shortcut medyo shortcut um, I, I'm not sure kung pwede siya sa C++. Hindi ko, hindi ko kabisado masyado yung C++. So, yung, kasi yung language na ginagamit ko is yun sa PHP, Java, Visual Basic, mga JavaScript. Sa C++, ah, C pala. Ah, marunong din ako mag-C, pero I'm not sure kung pwede yan sa C++. Ito. Ah, I'm not sure talaga kung ano yan. Kung, kung pwede ba siya sa C++. Yung tanong daw niya. Sir, ito yung kailan po ginamit. Nasagot na to kanina eh. Kailan po dapat gamitin ito? Nagtanong na si Alex. Um, bale, bale yung yung do while uh, for each. Kasi yung for loop nga, 
gagamitin mo siya kapag alam mo yung kung kailan mo lang, kung kailan lang siya dapat mag-execute. Hanggang kailan lang siya. Pero, um, yung do while kasi at saka while, kahit hindi mo alam kung kailan na matatapos yung loop, okay lang siya gagamitin. Pero yung for loop, kung alam mo yung hanggang kailan, yung, hanggang kailan lang yung loop mo. So, ayan. Or mas madali gamitin sa dalawa. Okay. Um, some more questions. Sir, yung double equal sign, para saan po ba? Yun. Hindi po kasi nakatin sa first session. Double equal sign. Um, comparison operator yun. Yung double, uh, double equal sign. So, comparison operator. Bale check niya lang kung yung isang variable, halimbawa x, kung equal ba siya sa y, or kung yung 1 equal ba siya sa x, or kung yung 1 equal ba siya sa 1. So, pwede siya both sa variable or value. Okay, so, meron kang ganito. And of course, meron din yung isa, yung 1 Pwede din siya not equal. Um, yun nga, yung purpose niya lang is to check the relationship between value or between variables. So, yun yung purpose niya. For checking. So, kung equal sila, yung x and y, so magiging true to. Kung hindi equal yung 1 tsaka yung x, magiging false siya. Okay, so, madali. Ano pinagkaiba ng while at do while, sir? Um, firstly, yung yung do while tsaka while, magkaiba sila in syntax, right? Magkaiba sila kasi asa na ba yan? Yung sa do while ano ba? Dito. Okay natin dito. Kasi yung do while, execute muna siya bago condition. Pero yung while, condition muna bago execution. Yun yung difference nila. So yung do, execute first before condition. Pero yung while, execute first before, uh, yeah, condition first before execution. And of course, yung syntax nila magkaiba din. Now na yung, uh, again, sa do while, execute first before condition. Pero yung sa while, condition first before um, execution. Yun, yung difference nila. Some more questions. Um... I think yung sunod na topic natin is all about methods or sa ibang programming yan, tinatawag na functions. Pero sa Java, methods. Kasi yung Java is more on um, classes, more on um, objects. And of course, yung term ng function or methods when it comes to object-oriented programming, methods yung term niya, yung group of codes. So yun yung next topic natin, which is yung methods. Uh, after after kung meron kayong questions. By the way guys, kung merong gustong mag-share, um, halimbawa meron kayong topic na gustong i-share, please let me know para at least ma-share nyo naman yung expertise nyo dito sa ating mga live sessions. So yung purpose natin dito is to help ad, uh, other students na matuto ng programming, ma magkaroon sila ng love ng programming. Um, yes, of course, na nagtuturo din tayo ng OOP. And actually, uh, kung gusto nyo, pwede din tayo mag, after ng methods, pwede din tayo mag-touch ng OOP. Yung mga classes and objects, attributes, yung mga constructors, modifiers, encapsulation, inheritance, yung mga packages, and more. So, pwede din natin yan ituro kung gusto nyo lang, gusto nyo lang naman. Pero yung, yun nga, yung next topic natin will be methods after answering ng mga questions nyo kung meron man. Pero kung wala, um, I think pwede tayo mag-proceed sa 
methods. Yes, naka-record po tayo. Um, live via satellite po tayo. <laughs> yeah, naka-record po tayo. And um, I hope na... Um, actually, hindi ko pa na-upload yung first session, but I'll I'll try to upload this... this um, maybe tonight yung mga... Uh, itong current session natin at saka yung previous session natin. Isasend ko yung link doon sa group natin para may access din yung iba. Okay. So, um, I think kung wala kayong question, maybe um, gawin natin yung methods later on na lang siguro pagka next session na uh, almost one hour na tayo dito sa session natin. Okay, so... Uh, thank you guys for joining dito sa live session natin tonight and I hope babalik kayo sa next session natin. And yun nga, nagpost ako dun sa group about database. Isa siya sa pinaka-importante na aspect when it comes to programming. So you have to uh, master also database. So meron akong speaker, nag, uh, parang guest speaker niyan sa database. Uh, professor, professor siya sa isang university. So, I'll just post the updates doon sa groups natin, or sa group natin, if uh, merong gustong mag-join or ma- merong gustong makinig doon sa uh, um, yung YouTube link ko. <laughs> um, actually, yung mga tutorial ko sa YouTube link ko is naka-English yung ano niya. language. Yung target ko kasi is parang makuha din ng iba. Pero ito yung kung gusto, sa mga gusto makinig or matuto din kasi meron din tayong um, other tutorials for for different programming. So for example yung PHP meron tayong um, JavaScript um, and especially yung um yung Java Effects para siyang new and improved na Java version. So sa Java Effects mas mas maganda yung graphical user interface, mas marami kang malalaro doon sa uh, Java Effects. And um yung yun nga yung sa channel ko meron akong tutorial doon sa Java Effects. Okay. So I hope uh klaro siya. And um If you want to support my my YouTube channel to siya. Yun lang sa mga gustong mag uh, mag-support. So wala siyang pilitan, guys. Okay. So, yun, I think yun lang, guys. And again, thank you for watching. Thank you for joining dito sa ating uh, live session. And yung mga updates natin post ko lang doon sa groups. And of course, yung link ng videos or yung recorded version uh, recorded version natin ipopost ko doon sa group so yun lang guys thank you for for coming and see you sa next session